Hello everyone, welcome to Imprint IS. And today we're continuing with the public administration series. And in today's lecture, we're gonna look into the importance, uh, the scope and the definition of public administration. So uh, as I was saying, we were talking about the scope and the meaning and the significance of public administration. But let's first try to define what is administration. So administration, an activity is as old as society itself. But if you think about it, uh, despite the fact that, you know, during Chanakya's time, we had the Arthashastra, right? And even uh, during the, you know, the Puration administration, we had an extremely good administrative system. But uh, the study uh, of administration started with Wilson's essay on the study of administration in 1887, right? So in case uh, this is something that you should highlight and note, as this is very important, we would be talking about this in detail in another lecture. Uh, so as a process, uh, as you know, uh, administration would occur in public as well as public organization, right? Uh, it occurs in business firms, it occurs in labor unions, it occurs in religious and charitable organizations. So even if you are a pressure group, right, like the RSS, Administration is extremely, extremely important. Even if you have like uh, the Vivekanand Foundation or you are MUT, administration is the key. But administration is seen to be divided into two types, public and private administration, right? So as an expect of, uh, you know, government activity, uh, you know, uh, though administration existed, uh, the private uh, administration is basically concerned with the private business. So basically, if you think about what is public administration and what is private, so in simple terms, public administration relates to the activities carried out by the government and private administration refers to the management of private business enterprises. So that is the basic idea. Okay. So what is administration? So the word administer is derived from the Latin word administere, which means to care for or to look after the people or to manage the affairs. And administration is defined as a group activity. So this is important. Administration is a group activity. It involves two things, cooperation and coordination. And it is for a goal. Basic idea is, why are you doing a group activity? Because you can't do it alone. That's the basic idea, right? Okay. Now, uh, we'll look at various thinkers and we'll be looking at their definitions. So we have the first thinker is Ian Gladden. He says, administration is a long, slightly pompous word as a humble meaning, but it means to care, then this is important, for it means to care for or to look after people, to manage affairs, and is determined action taken in the pursuit of conscious purpose. So there's an exact purpose, and that is the reason administration works for, okay? Right, like take for the example, uh, let's say, uh, the demonetization exercise. So there is a conscious purpose behind that, okay? Uh, Brooks Adams, let's look at him. Uh, so administration is the capacity of coordinating many, as we already talked about coordination above, and often conflicting social energies in a single moment. That's true, because despite the fact that you know people have different interests, they would want different things, uh, they basically are adroitly operated as a unit, and that is what administration is. So obviously, uh, it seems that he's an experienced practitioner, right? This is given a very practical example. And then administration, uh, let's look at what Negro says. Felix A. Negro is also a very you know, great thinker. Uh, Felix says that administration organization and use of men, materials to accomplish a purpose. So the idea is the purpose definition is one agreed upon. That administration obviously is a group activity, coordination, cooperation between different people and for a specific purpose. Now, here he has talked about it being an organization, and here it basically kind of talks about formalized systems. Okay. That there's a formal setup for you know administration. Uh, then we have Piffner and Prestus. They say that uh, administration is the organization and direction of human and material resources to achieve desired results. So desired ends, that is. So here instead of purpose, they've used so ends. They have used a different word. No, from purpose, let's go on to this. Okay. Now, uh, here, something very interesting. Piffner and Prestus talks about uh, direction of material and human resources. 
Okay, so that's another word. So one is organization, other is direction, the two words that have come out, right? Then Ellie White, he has basically talked about direction, coordination and control. Okay, so here there's another word. So we have already talked about coordination. Here we have another word called control. Okay, so Ellie White talks about that art of administration, the direction, uh, coordination and control of many people to achieve some objective or purpose. So here, you know, from ends it has become an object. Okay, so keep in mind that what uh, you know definitions pretty much are going in the same direction, right? A lot of people might say oh, there's so many definitions, how do I remember this? But the idea is that they pretty much are in the same boxes. Okay. And Luther uh, Gulick, and this he is somebody who's extremely important. We will study him as a thinker. So he says administration to do with getting things done and with the accomplishment of defined objectives. And here, something interesting has happened. It, you know, previously, it was talking about purpose. You know, here, defined objectives has come. So first, you know, from desired, so from here, we have the purpose, right? From here, we have desired results. And here is some objective or purpose. Here, we have defined objectives. So, you know, how it is going, I think this is something very interesting for you to appreciate. Uh, now we have Marx, right? And uh, he's wonderful. Other thing, administration is determined uh, action taken in the pursuit of conscious purpose. It, again, you know, def, you know, conscious purpose and determined action uh, is a systematic altering of affairs. So here again, uh, there's some kind of thought process of you know management, calculated use of resources. So here again, uh, you know, some inclination toward economics is also there, aimed at making those things happen which one wants to happen and for telling everything else to, to the country. Now, this is extremely wide as a definition. Uh, and, you know, this is what is administration, how it's going. So if you think about it, administration uh, initially was just to about taking care of the people, uh, which was very expansive. And then it became obviously for desired, defined objectives or defined purposes or desired ends. Now it has been talk about, you know, for telling everything to the country. Very different way of thinking about it. Uh, Herbert Simon, uh, Smithsburg, and Leah Thompson, they said in its broadest sense, administration can be defined as the activities of a group cooperating to some come. And this is something we have uh, read it uh, previously also. There was a definition previously for the same thing. And what is administration? Um, now we have actually gone through a lot of them. So uh, I think if, if you look at the brief analysis of the definitions above, you can definitely say it's a cooperative effort. And then is it pursuit of common objectives? So do you know in simple terms? I think in simple terms, if you talk about administration being a and the pursuit. Uh, one does not find any administration if there is uh, only a common purpose or without a collective effort or vice versa. Administration is called a technology of social. So very, very interesting way of defining it. Uh, administration also called a technology of social. Uh, now the, the question comes, what is the relationship between three things? We have administration, you know, organization and management, right? Uh, so according to William Sulz, uh, Sulze, he, he says administration, the force which lays down the objective, which an organization and management are to strive and broad policies in which they are to operate. Administration kind of actually also talks about, uh, you know, uh, policies. You know, management, it is about execution. Uh, here it will give a formal framework, a hierarchy, organization, and administration basically adds more things to it. It gives you a policy. That's the idea. So uh, organization is a combination of necessary human beings, material, tools, equipment, working space, right? Other things in a systematic correlation to accomplish some desired objective. Management obviously, which leads and guides, directs an organization for the accomplishment of predetermined objective. See, understand the predetermined objective is decided by the administration. Administration sets the goal, management strives to attain it, and organization the machine of the management for the attainment of the ends determined by the administration. So this is extremely very simple way of being defined. Okay, right. Uh, if in case you have any doubts uh, while uh, discussing this or if, you know you have any queries, please do post uh, a comment on the section. Uh, okay. So now let's try to look at management and administration. We have something somewhere very famous. Uh, we have Peter Drucker. Uh, 
He says management is a sort of business activity. He says it's, it basically shows economic performance, but administration is associated with non-business activities like that of the government. He says administration is different. If you look at you know what has happened across to administration, uh, many times uh, management uh, you know skills have been picked up by my administration have been thought of. Uh, the other view is that administration is associated with performing routine things in known settings in accordance with certain procedures, rules and regulations. Management uh, is basically about risk taking, dynamic, creative, and innovative functions. This is also very interesting. He's saying here it's about innovation, risk taking, right, and creative endeavors. And administration is just about routine things. That's how uh, another view about how management and administration are different. But in most cases, they're thought to be uh, similar. Uh, it's about the fact that management is maybe considered to be more about economy efficiency and effectiveness. Now let's look at what is public administration. So Wilson says uh, public administration is that part of administration. Right? Uh, it's a detailed, systematic application of law, and every application of law is an act of administration. Um, because remember, he was the president of the United States, and uh, he was also a political science. He thinks in administration in terms of application of law. Right, uh, but obviously, uh, in general, uh, public administration refers to that part of administration which pertains to the activities, administrative activities of the government. So the police work, or uh, you know, even let's say providing Narega or any kind of uh, activity that is happening, all those are public administration. So implementation of Narega or PM Kisan scheme, any scheme is about is the administration. Okay. LD White says that public administration consists of those operations uh, for their purpose, the fulfillment or enforcement of public policy. So let's say I have made a policy, let's say the national right, um, environment policy. Now, how it, you know, it is implemented, public administration would consist of that. Okay. Uh, Dwight Waldo says administration, public administration is the art and science of management as applied to the face of the state. And I think this is one of the most beautiful definitions. Right. Uh, you know, in case you want to use a definition in the exam, I would say this is one definition. I want to is the art and science of management as applied to the affairs of the state. Okay. Uh, then what does Nicholas Henry say? Right. And he has a very famous book. Uh, right. In case you want to read, public administration is a broad ranging and amorphous combination of theory and practice. It is its purpose to promote the understanding of the government and its relationship with society. Right. The idea is that. Uh, Public administration allows people to understand what the government is doing for them. It basically is to encourage government public policies to be more responsive to the social needs and to ensure managerial practices attuned to the effectiveness, efficiency, and deeper human requisites of the state. So I think it's a beautiful way of saying things. Although I think everybody, you know, will be talking about effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, the deeper human requisites is something that you know he has actually even talked about something like social audit, RTI, etc. In itself, here itself. So the traditional definition of public administration, uh, which are given above, reflect that public administration is not only involved in carrying out the policies or programs of the government, it reflects that it has no role in policy making and also locates the administration in the executive. Uh, but today, obviously, it's basically in abuse in a broader sense. It's not only about carrying out the programs of the government, right, the PLA, but also in policy formulation, and uh, covers the three branches of the government, right? So, you know, previously administration, if I think for, if I say what is public administration, you might say it is about, sir, you know, IS Kakart, simple way, right? Okay, but today it is also about the judiciary, 
right? Because obviously judiciary has started, judicial actors have been on, right? It is also about the legislature because of MP land scheme and obviously executive as well. So all the ministries, what they do, that is what in simple terms you would think that what public administration is. Uh, today, even if you think about the media, I would say that is also. Uh, public administration, according to Negro and Negro, let's have a look what they say. He says they are a competitive group effort in a public setting. Covers all the th three branches and their interrelationships, has an important role in formulation of public policy, and thus is a part of the political process. So all political parties also become a part of it. It is significantly different from private administration. It is closely associated with numerous private groups and individuals providing services to the community. So all NGOs, civil society are a part of it. Even J and J, Johnson Johnson's issues, like you know, when it has an issue, it's providing some kind of a, a powder, right? And which has the best host. So that becomes a public administration issue. Can easily become so. Uh, you know, public administration obviously is just expanding and expanding and expanding. Okay. Uh, just to revise, public administration is a non-political bureau public bureaucracy operating in a political system. It deals with the ends of the state, the sovereign will, the public interest and laws. Right? Is the business side of the government is also concerned with policy making, policy execution. Because all three branches, though it tends to be concentrated in the executive branch. So this right provides regulatory and service functions of the people in public good. It's significantly different from private, you know, administration because it concerns the public. It has emphasis on it. Its interdisciplinary nature it draws upon other sciences such as political science, economics, and sociology, especially. And it's just not just limited to it. There are others as well, right? Okay. So, what is the nature of public administration? Now, let's get to this. Uh, there are two ways of thinking: integral and digital. Integral view administration is just some of the all the activities, whether it's manual, it's clerical, it's managerial, all which are undertaken to realize the objective of the organization are seen to be in the nature of public. Right? Uh, so in the view, all the acts of the officials, whether it is the attendant to the secretary, to the government and the head of the state, they, it constitutes public administration. And Fiol and LDY would say that yes, this is it. Everyone, whether it's a PN or whether it's the IS, it's the secretary. All acts are public administration. Going to the managerial view, people who are involved in planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating, controlling, constituting public administration are the ones which are the nature of it. So that is the managerial view of it. And people like uh, Luther Bullock and Herbert Simon and Thompson and Smithsburg, they say that this is how it is. They say that administration has getting things done, not doing things. Okay. Right, that is what they use. And managerial view excludes public administrations uh, from non-managerial activities such as manual, clerical, and technical activities. So uh, let's look at the next topic, which is the scope of administration now. By the scope of public administration, we mean uh, what are the major concerns of public administration as an activity and as a discipline? Okay. Now remember, public administration embraces all the activities of the government. As an activity uh, of the scope of public administration is no less than the scope of state activity. Today, you know, we have the welfare state, uh, people expect many things, uh, they expect them even to take care of everything. Today, let's say, let's say take the case of TikTok being banned, right? that is also seen in the context of public administration. Today, uh, you know, whether you think about the Aadhaar or you provide the BM Kisan Yojana or any kind of old age pension scheme, uh, it is about public administration. Okay. Besides that, if you think about you know the government trying to manage uh, ONGC and other in regulate private industries, public administration today actually covers a very wide area. So that is the idea. The scope is, as I said, going wider and wider. Okay. So what has happened is that because of liberalization, privatization, and globalization, the scope is getting wider. Right. Today, you know, we need to have a national policy on artificial intelligence. We need to be focusing on big data. Uh, we need to be worried about drones and security. The scope is going wider and wider. Okay. Uh, so, if you think about uh, the narrow way of thinking about public administration and discipline, we have the post cop view. And uh, there are many writers. Uh, Gulick sums up uh, the scope of public administration in this. 
So this is the most easiest way of actually writing an answer for score. So P for planning. So what does administration? We have to plan, right? Obviously, they ask you to plan how things will go. Then you have to organize. So you have to look at what is what kind of man management systems have to be there. Then you have to staff, you have to recruit. Right? Okay. Then you have to direct those recruits to do certain things. Then you have to coordinate between them. Right. And then obviously you have to understand what where is the reporting happening and when. Obviously, the budgeting. Okay. So obviously, uh, it's it's not the, the way it is written here, but Poscope is a way of actually thinking about. So remember, planning means uh, the working out in broad outline how things will be done, the methods to be adopted, how do we accomplish it. Then we have organization, the establishment of formal structure, how uh, you know what hierarchy would be there. Obviously, the recruitment, through staffing, directing, how issue uh, orders will be issued, what would be the you know communication process, right? Uh, how would you uh, different uh, revisions will work with each other, right? Who is the point of contact, etc. Right? And budgeting obviously is physical planning, control, and accounting. Okay. Now um, the subject matter, the other view that is. Uh, so we know that public administration is with not only the processes, but also as you know, we have defense, law, and order education. And if you think about all of them, that you know, it also public administration also includes education, public health care, agriculture, public works, social security, justice, welfare. So these are obviously services do not just require POSCO needs, but have important and specialized techniques of their own, which are not covered by POSCO. So for example, uh, you know, police administration has those techniques of crime detection, uh, maintenance of law and order, which are obviously more vital to the efficient police work than formal principles of organization. So if you think about POSCOP, it is highly prescriptive, right? Um, hence, obviously, uh, you would say that even, let's say, as a doctor, you would have a different methodology, many different techniques would be there, diagnostic, et cetera. So public administration, uh, if you think about it, uh, is an instrument with two blades of scissors. One blade may be the knowledge of the field covered by the POSCOP. The other blade is the knowledge of subject matter in which techniques are to be applied. And both, uh, you know, it must be good to. Uh, so we may uh, conclude the discussion of the scope of administration, whether it's a subject matter or whether POSCOP is a good definition. It say that uh, it is public administration at two aspects, namely deciding things and doing things. And the first provides the basis for the second, right? Uh, planning, organization, staffing, etc are required, but so as is uh, doctor's diagnostic techniques and you know the details, I would say, right? And every subject matter in administration, every department would have its own subject matter experts and a way of doing things, which would be different, okay? Uh, a simple way of understanding is uh, you can use the POSCO definition uh, to actually write an answer in maybe any part of GS, but uh, you, know, you know, history would have a different way of writing an answer definitely. Right. So in history, you would start a little before, right, uh, of the answer. Like if you've been asked about uh, the impact, the decline of the Gupta Empire, you would talk about a bit about what the Gupta Empire was before you start talking about the reasons for the decline. Okay. So it, every subject will have. In the same way, making a map in geography is important. So as I was saying that, you know, you would require some kind of a subject matter view as well with the POSCO. Uh, then, obviously, the uh, importance of public administration. The study of public administration assumes significance, and according to Woodrow Wilson, uh, obviously, because of the fact that there's increasing complexity. As per Wilson, the objective of administration is to study, uh, to discover uh, what government can do properly and successfully, and uh, how it can do these things with utmost efficiency and the least possible cost. So, what is the idea behind public administration? Efficiency and obviously reduce economy, right? And obviously we look at the thirdly effective, right? At the same time, we look at uh, the four A's, accessibility, availability, affordability, right? So we have to look in terms of this. Now, uh, the most important uh, practical concern government today is working towards public interest, 
So obviously, uh, when you're looking at delivering public services, I would say uh, accessibility, availability, and affordability of services is equally important as effectiveness economy of the services itself. Right. So in the context, built in definition of a subject as being efficiency promoting uh, programmatic field uh, was the first explicitly the articulated statement uh, of the importance of a separate discipline of administration. So previously, what used to happen that we should think that political science, right, is enough to study politics. You don't need to study public administration. Remember, public administration actually came out of right political science. Now further, if you think about uh, public administration in the social science perspective, uh, remember administration is seen to be a cooperative and a social activity. So hence, uh, the concern of academic inquiry would be to understand the impact of government policies and operations society. So about a question being asked in the paper that what is the impact on Aadhaar on the society? What kind of, you know, so what is the impact of UBI? On the society, would it lead to a moral hazard that people will stop working, like universal basic income or the NAS scheme, uh, which the Congress is now saying, or it would lead to, uh, you know, people becoming more and more enthusiastic and getting better, at, you know, uh, being unafraid. That is, uh, to what extent uh, administrative actions is non-discriminatory? How is public administration functioning, and what are the immediate long-term effects of governmental action on the social structure? So how, let's say we have the EWS code. What would be its impact on the social structure? And these questions require, you know, careful analysis. Okay, because today what is happening is that people, uh, the government is deciding upon the demands of the people. But remember, we, the administration has to think about the IS officers, the policymakers have to think in terms of the society. What impact a certain, the PM Kisan Yojana will have on the people. Right. Uh, further, if you think about uh, public administration in developing countries like India, uh, we just got when we got independent from colonial rule, uh, we wanted speedy social economy development, and for that we required something called development administration, and how uh, you know social welfare activities can be effectively executed. Right. Uh, so uh, likewise, so as we know that uh, these aspects have given rise to a new discipline of development administration, and we would be studying about this in a separate unit. Right. Let's go ahead. So, uh, what is the importance? Now, let's just summarize. So, the emergence of the welfare in the democratic state has led to a you know exponential increase in the activities of the public administrator. Now, if you think about what the activities of DC were before, uh, you know, LPG and what are they today, uh, you know, I would say that they're too many. Now, even if you think about uh, a game like Blue Whale, so if there's a ban on it, how it's going to be implemented, it is going to be implemented by the DC. Now, this is something that, you know, has changed what uh, the you know, administration was before, right? And there is a, uh, this amounts to enhanced responsibilities. Further, uh, we have to serve all sections of people in society. Previously, administration was primarily concerned with the urban areas, if you look at colonial rule, right? Today, we have to even regulate uh, economic activities, right? Uh, think about the SEBI. So the SEBI, uh, if you think about it, it actually is regulating. And if you think about it, normally, the head of SEBI is an IRS officer and IPS officer. That is not something what an IS IPS officer thought of that his job would be, right? He, he would have thought his job would be actually working for the, you know, the people at large, right? Here you are, you know, just regulating into economic enterprises. Uh, then the industrial revolution. So the industrial revolution has given rise to social economic problems, making government assume new roles and responsibilities, right? Such as the promotion of rights of workers in industrial establishment. Take, for example, uh, in India, we had the sterilite case last year. So because of industries, uh, there was water pollution, and there's a case which is going on there. The uh, the state has an accurate number of industrial labor laws. It's imperative for the public administration to you know uh, implement such laws to meet the requirement of the welfare state. Uh, further, we have scientific and technological development. As I talked about, uh, we have big data, we have AI, we have nuclear energy, right? So all this has made uh, additions 
right? We have inventions of the telephone, typewriter, teleprinters, calculator, drones, right? All have these made a uh, big government and large scale administration is. Influenization is possible because there's a revolution in information and communication technology. So this has led to, because let's say I have a problem, I go to Twitter and tweet the minister. And that has been happening very regularly in the case of passports. Right. People from Libya actually has been asking, right? You know, Sushma Suraj has been asking people in Libya to evacuate Libya on Twitter. So that tells you what, how things have changed. Uh, economic uh, planning, obviously, centralized economic planning is there. There's a large number of experts, elaborate machinery for plan formation. So here we have the Niti Aayog, right? And so on. And that has increased the importance of public. Uh, finally, uh, just to revise uh, why we should study public administration, uh, because it touches people at every step, right? And for most of the needs, people depend upon public administration, whether it's getting a license, a birth certificate, a death certificate, etc. And it is extremely important, and the citizens of PP, uh, the country cannot ignore it. Uh, therefore, in its teaching should be a part of the curriculum of education should, and especially for somebody preparing for the civil services. Because if you don't study public administration, what else are you planning to do with the rest of your life as an ISO officer? Right. Uh, with that, uh, let's stop here and we will be continuing uh, with the next unit. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, in, do join a Telegram group. Uh, if you want to write to us, uh, email ID is given. Right. It's imprint knowledge solutions at gmail.com. Our number is plus nine one six two eight zero one eight seven nine one nine.